Well, a hearty shalom to you. Jeffrey Seif here, and uh, pleased to um, say hi. I'm glad you're looking my way. More importantly, I'm glad you're looking this way, uh, to the Bible. I'm reading from the thin line version of the Tree of Life. If you're looking for a great uh, text to purchase and give away, this is one that I do a lot of that with. It's uh, produced by Baker Books. It's the Tree of Life version. It's going all over the world. And I'm glad it's coming into your world. We're working through the Torah portions. And I'm really interested. Last week, we looked at uh, the parasha where an offering was taken for the manufacture of sacred space. Uh, we're working our way through the text a little more. That was the 25th chapter. And on here, I'm just entering into uh, the next reading, which is a swatch of text. But I'm interested in chapter 29. And I'd like you to look at a few verses with me. We have seen instructions, heard instructions about the manufacture of worship space, uh, a priesthood called forth. Uh, in the 29th chapter, we get to the setting apart of Aaron and his sons in a special way to officiate in the sanctuary. And with all these things established, now there's a central place where God meets with Hebrews. And we're told in chapter uh 29 verse 42 if you'll take a look he says i will meet with you to speak with you there there's, there's a tabernacle that's built and god says i'll meet with you and speak to you there and then in verse 43 as if it's superfluous redundant it isn't once again i will meet with b'nai israel the sons of israel and daughters of israel so it will be sanctified by my glory. Uh, there's uh, a space that's constructed worship space. And in the wake of it, we're reminded there's a place and God says, and I will meet with you there. Interestingly, when we're looking at the tabernacle, we're looking at this portable worship space. I call it God's Winnebago, his RV, his uh, recreational vehicle, his travel vehicle. Once we get to Jerusalem, uh, later on, it's going to morph into a stable fixture at a given place there in Jerusalem on top of the mount, as I'm sure you're all aware. Over and again in scripture, you hear instructions about once the place is established to bring your sacrifices there, um, uh, not to slaughter animals on every hill. I mean, there's a sense in which this is sacred space. It's to be uh, for biblically-minded religious people, it's to be uh, the object of attention, the place where their uh, religious journey is, uh, um, well, I don't want to say lived out. Uh, we have to live it out. There's 168 hours in a week. It's just not a question of going to sacred space and having a service. Uh, they have to live out the Torah in their workaday worlds. But there is a special place. There is sacred space. And it's a centralized place where people go to. Perhaps you can get some sense of where I'm going with this. In verse 44, uh, we read, So I will sanctify the tent of meeting in the altar. I'll sanctify Aaron and his sons to minister to me as Kohanim, as priests. So I will dwell among B'nai Israel and be their God. I mean, sanctified space, people set apart to lead in the worship there. Uh, God says, I'll speak with you there and I'll be your God. It's really condensed there. Now, I'm making a point of this because we live in a world today where religion is very privatized and who needs a central gathering place? It's just me and my personal relationship with God. And who needs a church? Who needs a congregation, a synagogue? It's just me and Jesus, me and Yeshua. And uh, in so many ways, we've given up on relationships. The world's so fractured. We've probably been burned People get burned at deeper levels and then at lesser, you know, the people get burned in marriage and in relationships at that level. And people get involved in faith-based communities and get burned there as well. And people just give up on people and say, it's me and God. Uh, but it doesn't really quite work that way. The Lord says, as, as you do it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you do it unto me. So truth of the matter is you can't be any more pious and religious than you are uh, connected wholesomely with other people. I agree with St. Augustine, who said, if you don't have a church as your mother, you don't have God as your father. I mean, that um, it's just the family. It's what it is. There's, there's a place to gather. 
and that's not only in the Newer Testament, here in the Older Testament as well. Uh, it's good to go to a place to set apart some time, some energy, some resource for the development of that place in order that we can have a place where we can just kind of focus on things divine, where we can concern ourselves with the sacred and look a little deeply into the Word, a little more deeply, sing songs about the Lord, hear a word from the Lord, someone with a little more penetrating insight into the Word can bring us something new or remind us of something old so we can, you know, just keep our ears open. You know, Yeshua said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Truth of the matter is we all have eardrums with the, 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 where cones vibrate, uh, but people can hear but not hear. And uh, when we're the kind of people that we appreciate the need to get up from where we are and go bring an offering and worship, um, those that are thus minded, I think, fare a lot better uh, than those that are more privatized in their faith and in their lives. I think personally that uh, while we do need to have our privatized personal walk with God, uh, it's lived out corporately in so many ways. And I'm reminded of that here when I'm finding myself in the book of Exodus where he sets them out of Egypt, he sets them free and brings them into the wilderness and gives them instruction from the mountain. There's prophetic word, but in conjunction with the prophetic word, there's a development of worship space. And in, in conjunction with that, it's reiterated over and again, this is the place to go. And I just want to extrapolate from that and remind you that uh, we need to go to places. Uh, certainly uh, in the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Society, we're all about bringing shalom in the home and gathering together around the wording, the, the reading of Scripture, God's Word. I mean, that's paramount in our thinking. We have a nice big brick study Bible, uh, family Bible, coffee table Bible for that very purpose. Uh, but it's not just to do it in our home personally. It's to get involved in a larger house and go there and hear from God. And I hope that you will uh, allow me to spur you a little if you're a little lackluster in that regard. Uh, uh, you know, I'm a pastor, I'm a rabbi, I'm all about wanting people to gather. So, you know, I'm inclined that direction. But even more than me being inclined, who, I mean, who cares about me? Uh, when you read the Bible, you see that really is just so very important. And I note that here because God notes it here right after the development of the manufacture of the tabernacle, bingo. That there's a place and people are beckoned to take it seriously and go meet God there. I hope you'll meet God there and cultivate your relationship with God, with other people who are minded to serve him and worship him. Well, Jeffrey Seif here signing out. May the Lord bless you and keep you and strengthen you. And I'll see you next week. Same time, same station.